Here and now. A DPT trip report by Piratica. Uploaded to Erowid.org April 2nd, 2007. For months I had been without psychedelic experience. In fact, in the previous year there have been only a few. The acid was long since gone. It has been hard even to find mushrooms lately. Then I remembered the DPT on the shelf, next to the DMT and 2CB that I was too scared to use until the perfect time. The DPT was there only because I didn't know what else to do with it. About 8 years ago I obtained some DPT from a supply house and experimented with it. It was free base, I assumed, because the label didn't say DPT hydrochloride, just DPT. My friends and I smoked it and tripped and generally had a good time. I ordered more when it ran out, but all I could get was DPT HCL at the time. So that came, and I heard that you couldn't smoke it, so I tried snorting it but vowed to never do it again because the drip burned the back of my throat so badly. Then I tried injecting it into muscularly, and that was so intense I only did it once. I put 200mg each into a bunch of caps and gave it to some friends to eat. They had a mellow but fun experience. So I had 200mg left that I didn't know what to do with, and it sat there for years. The other day I brought it out, blew the dust off. It had turned sort of a tan colour from the white that it used to be. Because I heard that it oxidises over time, I had no faith that it would work in any sort of form whatsoever. I thought about it, and then on a whim I put a little bit into a glass pipe and heated the glass with a flame. It melted immediately. I watched, and the oil did not re-solidify. I vaporised a small amount and inhaled it, and waited for something to happen. My legs began to feel restless, an unmistakable alert. It's gonna work. Whether the HCL salt is actually smokable, or whether I in fact had the free base, I do not know. What I do know is that it worked. It is still potent even after sitting there for 7 years. I put it away for the time being. Today, I brought it out again. I set everything up for an escape. I had the music all queued up and the headphones adjusted just right. I had the blanket smoothed out. My body was clean and naked. Yet as I loaded the DPT into the pipe, I hesitated. Was this really what I wanted? What I really wanted is to escape from alcohol. I did not want to consume any today, nor tomorrow, nor the next day. It has become painfully obvious what a negative force in my life alcohol has become, and yet I have found it difficult to let go of. Perhaps if I plunged into DPT space, I would not feel the urge to drink tonight. Perhaps if I went in there, there would be some answer waiting for me that I had been searching for. Fuck it, I thought. I held the lighter flame to the glass and watched the 100mg I had put in there melt. Soon, vapour appeared in the pipe and I put my lips to it and inhaled long and slow. The vapour from DPT is not harsh like DMT. It doesn't seem to burn your lungs. It just tastes warm and sweet and makes your tongue go kind of numb. I took in all my lungs could hold, maybe 30 milligrams vaporised. Unlike DMT, DPT does not start to come on as you are still inhaling. It waits until you've held your hip for a while. I held it as long as I could, and as I did so, the walls very gently began to breathe. The texture on the ceiling began to crawl as well. I exhaled, and my breath was full of vapour. I had planned to take another hit, but then I found myself just staring at the pipe. I didn't want to take another, but I didn't not want to either. It just felt very peaceful and content to sit there and stare at it instead of smoking it. Well, I'd better set the pipe down then. I laid back to be absorbed into the music. Divine Moments of Truth by Spongle but I found that the world was much more interesting with my eyes open than with them closed. The ceiling was very colourful and crawling, with repeating organic movements. My inner monologue was very noticeable, the music not so. When I had listened to this song on DMT, I seemed to travel to another space entirely, one in which this particular song was playing with total and utter cosmic genius. This time it seemed just like some good music to be listening to, I was brought very much into the awareness of this space, this world, this body. I could feel my legs getting restless. When the song finished 10 minutes later, I got up. I felt cold. I put on running clothes and shoes. Outside it was late afternoon. Wind was in the trees and dark clouds in the sky. I didn't care. I put on a beanie and glasses and called the dogs. I walked out the front door. The sky was shimmering, the sidewalk crawling. The wind was bitter cold, and a few snow flurries were falling. Whoa, this is going to be intense, I thought. Fuck it. The dogs ran out the back gate when I opened it. 
I ran after them down the trail that leads towards the mountain behind my house. I felt very cold. I don't know if I'll get far, I thought. Everything was moving, but when you're running, everything is moving whether you're on drugs or not. That inner monologue is still very clear. My feet go where they go. My thoughts wander. Ever since I was first exposed to them, I've been wrestling with the question, what is it exactly that psychedelics do? It's hard to answer, because they don't really do anything. Maybe it's better to ask what they stop you from doing. So I've dropped that first hit of acid and wait a few hours. At first, nothing happens. Then all of a sudden I discover that the ordinary has become very profound. Only maybe it hasn't. No, actually it was profound all along. It's just that somewhere along the line, I stopped paying attention to it. It's funny. People always talk about how profound the psychedelics are. But it's not the drugs that are profound. It's the whole universe that's profound. Everything. That rock and that tree and that bug and that dog running ahead and the clouds above and all of it is profoundly beautiful, miraculous and divine, whether we notice it or not. When I was a child and the whole world was new, everything in it was fascinating to me. That is because I was observing it from a beginner's standpoint. I did not think that you knew nothing about it, therefore I paid attention carefully in order to learn. But at some point I decided that I had learned enough, and so I formed labels in my mind for things bug, tree, cloud. Once I created in my mind this simplified idea of things, I could stop paying attention to them and focus on other things. What the kindergarten teacher wanted, for example. I've come to the first junction. I take the left path up the mountain. A warmth is starting to seep through my body from the muscles moving inside. My legs are running. The scenery is passing. My thoughts are flowing. When you were very young, I'm saying to myself, your brain was plastic, it was mouldable. Synapses were performing, breaking and reforming. I experienced stimulus and I learned action. In my brain, neural connections were made that associated a familiar pattern of stimulus with a pattern of reaction. Clouds, for example, did not require much action because they could not be interacted with. Likewise, they did not require much attention. How many times a day do I walk outside and not notice what is going on in the sky above me? That is because the sky rarely requires any action, so my brain filters out the visual stimulus of the sky and keeps it from reaching my conscious mind. It leaves my mind to focus on more important matters. What am I going to have for lunch today? Am I going to be late for work? Will I have enough money left over this month to buy that jacket that I want? My brain became more and more hardwired as I grew older. Old neural connections become harder and harder to break, and new ones harder to make. My brain began to function in a rhythmic pattern instead of chaotically as it did when I was young. I wake up in the morning, go to work, come home, drink beer and go to sleep. One day starts to blur into the next. Sometimes I think to myself that tomorrow I will make a change, but then tomorrow comes and more than likely it goes the same way as yesterday. This is because my brain has become hardwired for me to behave in this way. I made it on top somehow. I didn't even notice myself running up the steepest part of the trail. Come to think of it, I can't even remember doing it. It is strangely peaceful under the Ponderosa at the top. The wind has stopped. New fallen snow sits fluffy and white among the trunks. My pace quickens as I begin descending the other side. I think that what psychedelic drugs must accomplish by binding to the 5-HT2 receptor is that they stop these neural connections from functioning temporarily. They stop the filters from working. Poison for the mind, as Pendle would say. Poisoning normalcy, that is. Poisoning familiarity. Poisoning those cancerous patterns that have grown there and make me sick. I glance at the sky, and instead of my brain labelling clouds and diverting attention elsewhere, I am all of a sudden caught by the stunning beauty unfolding above me. And all around me. Everywhere. All of a sudden the world is new. Like it was when I was a child. Everything is innocent again. Everything is beautiful again. I forget where I have to be at a certain time tomorrow but I am very aware of what is going on right in this present moment. In our society, we are so focused on the future that we tend to forget to appreciate what we have in the present moment. How many times do we really stop to notice how good it feels to be alive? But when you stop to think about it, it really does feel good to be alive and healthy. Even if you're sleepy, even if your muscles are sore from the day before. How many times do we stop just to take a deep breath and enjoy? Most of the time, People forget to do these things, and I think this is a great loss. 
The psychedelics tend to slap me across the face and remind me of these things. It's very hard not to forget again and slip back into the old ways of functioning, although I think it is a very important lesson to remember that there is a now, and it is amazing. So why the addiction? Why the drinking? I can see that the influence of alcohol takes me in the exact opposite direction. It takes me away from the now. Away from the present. Away from the joy and the pain and the beauty all around us all the time. It is an escape when the way seems too hard. When things are too painful or too frustrating. It is easy to escape. It demands no responsibility. It is a lazy man's drug. It takes the pain away, but it takes the beauty away too. All the poignancy of this wonderful and terrible world is lost to the drunkard, who escapes to his slumber or his stupor. The wind is blowing again, and a few flurries are hitting me in the face. My chest heaves with the breath that steams from my mouth. The world is cold and grey and stormy, and very beautiful. I'm running fast down the hill towards my house, floating over the rocks and around the winding bends, feeling very alive and very grateful to be here now, in this moment, in this body, in this world.